In this video, we're going to go over some details about fiber lasers and whether a fiber laser is the right tool for you. Pew, 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 pew. Is it easy to set up and learn a fiber laser? Setup was super easy. It came in a crate, we threw it on this bench, and the laser itself was pretty much ready to go. EasyCAD, on the other hand, is awful, but we'll talk about how awful EasyCAD is later. For now, we're going to focus on how easy it is to learn the laser itself. So, the laser is relatively easy to operate. It's just learning all the different materials and how they're going to react with their laser. For instance, all the different metals kind of react a little differently, and that's the hardest part of learning the laser is titanium reacts different than stainless, stainless reacts different than aluminum, and vice versa. So there are websites with a bunch of different laser specs and materials and what works and what doesn't. The issue is finding specs for your laser specifically, but usually you can do a little math and kind of get yourself close and it's a pretty good starting point. So let's show you what it takes to run something like this. We're gonna carve a few things and just show you what goes into it. Turn it on. Boot the computer. So we're gonna start out with these little business cards that are coded. These are pretty easy and what most people are probably gonna start with. So first you need to focus the laser. This laser, for instance, has an autofocus. I just push this button. The other ones you'll have to do manually. And then most lasers should have this red alignment aid. If it doesn't have it, I would not buy it because it is amazing and saves a ton of headache. These are just a coated metal, so we're just removing that top coating and not actually etching into the metal itself. This is real time, but I'm going to speed it up just for your viewing pleasure so you don't got to watch this thing cut for a minute. A CO2 laser and diode laser can do this, but this will do it a lot faster. These business cards are cheap, and I see people get two, three dollars a piece for them. It's not something I sell, but it's super cool to give out or give to businesses or people as gifts. And this one is real time. Each side took about one minute each. And here you can see one minute per side, and then these are my settings. If you really wanted to, you could make a jig and do like four of these at a crack, but again, it's just not something I really make. And if you want to be hated by every waiter at the restaurant, just slap down one of these. I mentioned making jigs, but one thing you should be aware of is that fiber lasers have a small cut area. So when you're looking at lasers, make sure you look at the marking area and not the table size. You can change this based on different lens types, which I'll show you in a second. But the larger the lens type, the less detail and cutting power you're going to have. So a larger lens will have less penetrating force and take a little longer to engrave and you'll get a tiny bit less detail. I have a 220 lens, so I can do about six by six inches. So we're going to do this plastic apple charger. And as I practice and get experience, I just save these settings in here. So like Apple plastics, and then I just pretty much put it in there and push go. So again, stick the object under the red laser dot, push autofocus, and it will automatically focus. So the laser will show the outside or the actual item. I like to just do the outside as it's just a little easier to align. And sometimes you gotta do a few passes. This one, I believe I did four, but it turned out pretty cool. Plastic is a weird one. You can do P-Mags. I've tried other different types of plastics with not so great results, but this one does work well. So I have this slate coaster. I've never done slate before, so let's check out one of these websites to see if we can find a number that'll get us close. Search for slate. Slate coaster. So 50 watt JPT. That's 50 watt, so it's close. Frequency 45. We can do that. So I'm starting a little lower than the recommended number just because I've never done this before. And as you can see, this one's a little bit light. So on the next one, we'll just crank up the power a little bit and see what happens. And as you can see, it does lighten it a little bit. This is three times speed. So I'll probably stick with this number, but for sake of experimenting, we're gonna crank the power just to see what happens. didn't really change anything and this lighting's kind of bad so we'll show you a little bit better lighting so I would go with the second option and just write that number down but as you can see this took about a minute and it looks pretty good if you have a mobile machine I believe you can kind of get a yellow color as well so these machines absolutely love brass it's kind of what I've been using a lot of and we're gonna do this coin here this would be a ball marker for golf and it's just something fun and easy to make 
for whatever reason, the audio is blowing out on these, so I just turned it way down. But as you can see, I'm doing a deep etch here, and then just to show you that you can do different shades, we'll do a light pass here just to show you. But I'd rather this be black and kind of do the inverse. So after we clean this up, I'll do a darkening pass with high power and low speed just to get a really dark color. This is also sped up, but the overall coin took about three minutes. And we have a ball marker. I went a little too deep. I didn't have to go that deep, but this would sell for about $20. And as I like golf, this is kind of more of the stuff I make. You can crank a bunch of these out. I also give away a bunch of them for like whole prizes at different golf courses and stuff like that. And we're going to do the same design on a piece of stainless. This is a coated stainless coin. So I'm doing like a low power, but a bunch of passes because I don't want to etch through that coating. If you etch through the stainless steel coating, it will rust. So you kind of got to be careful with some things. And these are pretty popular with golf course logos on them, people's business names, their name, or something as a gift for their kid or from their dad. Grind Your Golf actually brings his fiber laser to a golf course at different outings and such, and we'll do custom stuff on the spot. And as you can see, nice and clean, took a few minutes. And this will stick to a magnetic divot tool. I prefer to do leather on the CO2, but we're gonna try it out for the sake of the video. So this first one I found was a little too light. And then this second one I found actually almost like erased the darkness. So I played with the frequency a little bit and raised the power and this next one looked a lot better. But it still wasn't dark enough. So I raised the power once more and got the desired effect. I would definitely tweak this further, but for now, it gets me close for next time. And these are my personal wedges. They're getting a little beat up now as they're just raw metal, but you can see you can do a ton with these fiber lasers. And these are the first ones I've done. I just got these from Goodwill. The tailor made my actual old one, and this is just a putter that I used for a little while. I found this vintage putter for $5. It's solid brass, and I've been dying to put a design on it. This will be a little longer one, so I'll just spread this one out throughout the video. I went ahead and polished it up to give it a nice sheen. For alignment, it can be pretty scary and stuff like this, so I like to do a nice light pass, because then if it's off, I can just quickly buff it and redo it. So when you're buying a laser, you're gonna see wattage, and power source or laser type. And for wattage, it's pretty self-explanatory. The higher the wattage, the deeper and faster you're gonna be able to cut. If you're not gonna be doing a whole lot of deep etching, you can, you'll be just fine with a 20 to 30 watt laser. But if you wanna do deep etching, I would buy the biggest laser you can find. Uh, 50 is pretty safe. If you can afford 100, I'd definitely go that route. You're gonna save a ton of time deep etching. And then laser source or laser type, you'll also see JPT MOPA or Rakus power source. For instance, this is a 50 watt Rakus machine. Therefore, my frequency range can only go 50 to 100. And for most things, that's fine. But if you wanna do different colors on stainless steel, you're gonna to wanna to get a MOPA. It just really allows you to fine tune that laser beam. And if you can afford it, I'd probably get the MOPA or JPT just because you can just do a little bit more. And when I bought this machine, I didn't really understand all that. I just knew I wanted to do some deep etching. So I got the biggest one I could get, which at the time was a 50 watt machine. And for me, it's fine. I'm not doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. It's just doing a bunch of like brass coins and stuff like that. And the 50 to 100 frequency range is just fine. And back to the brass putter here, I'm doing a darkening pass or like a black pass. This is a low speed, high power pass. And it really puts a nice black finish on the putter. And then just do a couple cleanup passes just to make the design really pop. Potential for money. How much money can you make with one of these? For example, I have a $60 minimum, so if someone brings me a pocket knife and they want to get their name on it, it's 60 bucks. Versus 
if you do a bulk order, I kind of price that out ahead of time and it's not really an hourly rate. It's just like the one-off weird things, I really make sure I get what I'm worth. But right away, you might just want to do that to get your service out there. It all depends on how you market yourself. Most of the money is going to be made in bulk goods. Like I've seen people sell a bunch of pens and you laser the business name on it. You can do wedding gifts. There's just so much stuff you can do. For instance, I'll do these golf clubs and I'll charge 60 to $80 and it usually takes me about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the design. If it's super complex, I'll obviously charge more. So all these lasers come with a board and it's usually an EasyCAD 2 or an EasyCAD 3 board. I recommend avoiding the EasyCAD 3 board unless you're planning on doing 3D designs, which then I think only EasyCAD 3 can do that. But for my instance, this machine can't do 3D and it has an EasyCAD 3 board in it meaning I can only use EasyCAD 3. If you have the EasyCAD 2 board, you can use Lightburn, which is a far superior program. I don't know why Lightburn doesn't offer an EasyCAD 3 setup. I have no idea, but EasyCAD 3 gave me a horrible time setting this thing up. It wasn't the company's fault, it's EasyCAD's fault. I run a Mac computer and I run through Parallels and I have no problems running any other software like that, but EasyCAD 3 just did not work. I had to call customer service and we just couldn't figure out what was going on, so I just kind of bit the bullet and went and bought a Windows computer and I redid everything and it worked just fine. Kinda. EasyCAD 3 is just a very poorly designed program. It gets the job done and after you use it, you get kind of used to it and that's fine, but it's just so buggy, it crashes, it just kind of does the bare minimum and I've made it a point to anytime I get any sort of progress in the app, I just save what I'm doing because I'm assuming it's going to crash. It's literally the worst software I've ever used for a machine. So if you can, buy an EasyCAD 2 board. It should say that in the description when you're buying your machine. I, I don't believe Thunder Laser offers the EasyCAD 3 lasers anymore. And that's probably why, because EasyCAD 3 is just nothing but problems. So. Uh, if you have any other recommendations for softwares and you have a fiber laser, please let me know in the description. I would love to use Lightburn as that's what my CO2 uses, but I'm stuck using EasyCAD 3. And you can switch the board, but I don't want to do all that. And ooh, this turned out so good. Now I'm gonna put it back together and I put a little custom two moose design filigree on the back as well. So how much will a fiber laser cost you? And that's kind of the big question with these things because in my opinion, it's kind of good they're expensive and also bad they're expensive. The reason it's good they're expensive is there's that higher barrier of entry. So there's gonna be less people competing against you when you're trying to make money because most people aren't gonna fork over $4,000 to buy a fiber laser. And I would say the range of these can range anywhere from $2,000 to $10,000. So you're gonna get a lot smaller unit with probably cheaper parts for $2,000 versus this unit here was about $9,000. And if you look at the cheaper units, they're open. They don't have the door. They don't have any exhaust. They're just kind of an open source laser. Versus this one, you can shut this it keeps the bright light out of your eyes. Any fumes that are coming off the stuff get extracted straight outside, and you're just paying for that. And also some of them cheaper lasers are coming from who knows where, versus Thunder Laser has good customer service. I've dealt with them a few times with this laser, just getting it set up and trying to figure out like the rotary, and they help me out pretty quick. So customer service, you're getting an enclosed machine. I think I saw the cheapest enclosed machine I could find, I think, was six or seven thousand dollars. And again, this one was eight or nine. I don't remember anymore. I personally waited to get one that had the enclosure. My friend Medallion Maker on Instagram, he's got a hundred watt machine, and you should see the sparks that thing throws off. It's kind of like staring at a welder. And when you got this enclosure, it contains it. You can look in through the window, and it doesn't really bother me. You can also cheat it open or disable this feature if you want to run it open. So I just wanted an enclosed laser and that's just what felt fit best in my shop. 
I went ahead and reached out to Medallion Maker and he was kind enough to send me videos of his setup. He has a 50 watt and a 200 watt OMG laser. As you can see, these are open lasers, so he has to rig up this exhaust system because you don't want to be breathing in those fumes. And you'll see how many sparks these things will throw off in a second. It's pretty crazy. And as you can see, it's not something you want to be staring at. And he does way more stuff than I do, so go check him out on Instagram. I'll tag all of his stuff in the description. They do make lasers for probably less than two, three thousand dollars, but if you're looking to do any sort of production, I would probably save the money and get a bigger laser. I honestly haven't used one of the cheaper lasers, but I've seen people use the three thousand dollar lasers and they work just fine. It's just getting the power source you need is probably going to cost you more. Any 50 watt laser is probably going to run you around five thousand dollars. And then like the MOPAs and all that are probably going to run a little more. Um, I think you can get a hundred watt laser for probably twelve thousand dollars but that's just not something I really need. Unless you're doing a lot of like pew pew slides and stuff where you're doing a bunch of deep engraving, the hundred watts probably overkill. But if you're engraving it saves a ton of time. And here's the finished putter. I absolutely love how the black shaft makes it pop. I couldn't find a gold one, but this will have to do. Sweet rules putter grip and nailed it. What materials can a fiber laser do? So this is pretty much designed for metal. It can do leather, uh, rock, stone, uh, terracotta I've seen it do, slate. But I would say a majority of the reason you're gonna buy one of these is for engraving metal, and that's pretty much it. I have a CO2 laser also, and that pretty much does everything this can do. This can do leather, but if I was gonna primarily do leather, I would get the CO2 laser just because you have such a bigger area. Um, that can also do coated, the CO2 laser can also do coated metals, but again, this is kind of a select machine for metal only. It can't do glass, it can't do acrylic, and Again, metal. So starting out, would I get a CO2 laser or a fiber laser? Honestly, in my situation where I have a wood shop, I would 100% get the CO2 laser over the fiber laser. And if you're strictly into like lasering and customizing stuff, you can really do a lot with the fiber lasers. But again, it can do wood, but very poorly. If you're doing woods, leathers, acrylics, CO2 lasers for you. Pretty much any metal under the sun, fiber lasers for you. I'll link down in the description a couple different lasers that I feel like are good value that would hopefully treat you well and have good customer service because the last thing I would want to do is buy a laser that's already intimidating and have no customer service. So I'll tag a few down there. Um, this is a Thunder laser. They're on the higher end of the budget. They make great CO2 lasers. They make great fiber lasers and they also have a UV laser I'm pretty interested in. Um, if I would have bought it again, I probably would have went with like a 50 to 100 watt JPT like MOPA type laser, but overall it's fine. Um, Thunder laser is a little more expensive, but you're getting the US based customer service. They helped me out on a weekend and it was great. Um, you're getting the, the enclosed machine, autofocus is super nice. A lot of the cheaper machines don't come with autofocus and you got to manually do it. It has an exhaust and Overall, it was just a good machine, but again, you end up paying a little extra for that. Um, it's the end of the video, guys. We officially launched a Patreon, so if you want to support us, we're going to start offering different discounts on files and hopefully build a little community over there. I'll also link that in the description. Check out our website. We have a bunch of CNC and laser files over there. Hope you all have a wonderful day.